we're looking for the possible cradle of life. These might be the type rocks for the origin of life on other planetary systems. For any cellular system to function, we've always needed water as the medium in which this occurs. I always find it amazing when I come to Oman and I look at these amazing vistas and it's so dry. And the surprises of everywhere around me right now under the ground is water being stored in these rocks. There's this entirely habitable environment underneath our feet that we can't even see. For condensing solar systems everywhere. So when we find planets that are in the so-called Goldilocks zone that are gonna have the right amount of solar input and all that, the surface is likely to be not too different from this. And right now, the, one of the questions is just, is this really habitable or not? If you can function in these rocks, then that opens up a huge window of other places that you could potentially function in, in the solar system, so. And other solar systems. Other solar systems, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So we're part of the Oman Drilling Project. It's a really large team of scientists that are going to work together over the next few years. The objectives of the drilling program are numerous. At this site specifically, we're trying to look at all the parts of the CO2 cycle. So we're trying to look at the water going into the rocks, the water in the subsurface where it's reacting with the rocks, and the water coming out the other end. There's 200 and something scientists who've registered as being participants in the project, and they come from science disciplines of geophysics and physics, geology of course, geochemistry and biology. The study of the Earth has traditionally been kind of compartmentalized, biology, geology, and physics, but there's an increasing recognition that there's a pretty tight feedback between the living Earth and the solid Earth. Here there's a real synergy between the geochemistry and the biology. The Sultanate of Oman hosts this unique scientific drilling program where a big chunk of oceanic crust and the rocks underneath the mantle have been thrust up onto the Arabian continental margin, and it's the largest exposure of ocean crust and upper mantle anywhere on land. So now we can walk in these beautiful canyons and we can walk down 20 kilometers into the interior of the earth in essence. It's really special that there's these rocks that should be deeper underneath the surface of the earth. This isn't a system that we're often questioning, and we want to know how it's really functioning here. And the only way for us to examine really who's present and how they live within the system, we need to pull out the rock that is the framework in which they reside. We're doing what's often considered exploration. We're drilling rock out and we're recovering the rock because we want to study it for its chemical characteristics. We're doing a coring that allows us to recover intact rock that allows us to reconstruct each step with depth of what rock types were present and what else was contained within that rock. We're going to drill down 400 meters. That's four and a half football fields. Uh, I guess that's about the distance from here to the drill site right now, which I think you can see in the background. So it's, it's pretty far. When the core first comes out of the ground, my orientation is to immediately look for reaction zones. So I'm looking for frozen examples of the active reactions where fluid is modifying the rock and the rock is modifying the fluid. Oftentimes there'll be a fracture that's been the locus of focused transport of water. So you'll see minerals that were precipitated in the fracture and then you'll often see a halo around it where diffusion and other processes have modified the wall rocks around that fracture. We get all excited when it comes up and it's green and it's red and it's black and it's all these different colors and then there's structures cross-cutting each other and it's just like a fabric that's so unique that you could stare at it for hours, it's like an art form that's in there. My job when I'm here is to try and figure out how to allocate the core because the biologists need whole rounds. The geologists and geochemists, they only get five centimeter chunks of a quarter of the core. And so it's a whole different kind of sample and I have to look at the core and decide, well, if they run off with that bit, what's gonna happen to the geochemists and all the structural geologists and everybody else? That's good. That's what we're open for. So that you want to... uh, I wonder what we can do. You could have that piece if you want with the vein. Yep, we would love it. All right. The 
project was designed to meet multiple scientific purposes and we have to all trust in each other to understand what the whole team needs and get the best sample. And it's great right now, we have so many different people here. We have to talk every day. What are you excited about? What do you see in this rock? And what they see is something very different than what we see. And then we go, oh. <laughs> Maybe something different's happening in this rock than I realized. And that'll go on for years after we drill because for years after, people are going to be using these rocks in different ways, and we need to hear their stories, what they learned, and what that means for our own questions. I would love it if we could establish that there's a feedback between fluid transport and the microbial activity. This was the first place where people could come and say, hey, when we look at the biology of this water, it doesn't look like any other water on Earth. And it was the first sort of indication then that there might be interesting biology, unique biology that's living deeper. Most of this water was stored somewhere deep beneath us, and we don't know how deep it's coming from. And it contains in it the biology of those organisms that are living at depth that we can't see or can't access without drilling. So if we could start to understand why these rocks are holding water, how long the organisms can function in that state, it gives us a new framework to start thinking about where we should look for life elsewhere. When we look at the surface of Mars, we know it's dry, but there's rocks like these in the shallow subsurface there as well. Are they holding and trapping and storing water that we can't observe at the surface? There's definitely a high potential that we will see organisms that haven't been detected anywhere else yet. This may be like the first occurrence of seeing certain DNA sequences, for example, or different physical structures of how an organism is built and configured. So we're hoping to go in and see them in their sort of native state and try to start understanding who are these organisms we've detected in the water and what are they doing here. So, in terms of the really big picture, maybe we'll come out with a real comprehensive understanding of reactive transport of fluids in the Earth at every depth. Here in Oman, we can ask a lot of questions about what happens when carbon dioxide dissolves into water and then is transferred into the subsurface. When rain falls on these mantle rocks, it dissolves magnesium from the rocks and that sucks CO2 from the air and makes a very magnesium bicarbonate rich fluid. That goes underground and precipitates almost all the carbon in solid carbonate minerals. Along that reaction path, it also dissolves calcium, and when the calcium-rich water comes back to the surface, it has no carbon in it, but it takes CO2 directly out of the air to form solid calcium carbonates. And so we're trying to orient these boreholes so they're placed along that reaction path. What we'd like to do is understand this natural process well enough that we could emulate it in order to produce something that really was significant in terms of taking CO2 out of the atmosphere. There's so much rock here. You know, look how much rock there is that could continue to uptake carbon dioxide. And all these organisms we've been talking about that might live in these rocks might also take up carbon dioxide and make bodies and make biomass and help hold carbon here. So the rocks and the life within here may be a very important reservoir of carbon. The uptake of CO2 from the atmosphere by weathering of these rocks here in Oman is taking 100,000 tons of CO2 out of the air every year. We have laboratory studies that show us that that process could be accelerated by a factor of a million or more, that you could achieve rates on the order of a billion tons of CO2 per cubic kilometer of rock per year. So now suddenly you're talking about something that really might actually make a difference to the human aspect of the carbon cycle.